Now, what I would like to do for the moment uh, is I want to in interview my lovely lady. So Mary can join me up here. The reason why I want to interview with her is I want... Uh, Mary's gone through a lot of stuff about truth quite recently. And... Uh, and Mary's gone through quite a lot of stuff about truth recently. And what I wanted to do is, uh, is for Mary to share with you the whole process she's been through over the last year and a half about truth. Because there's been many aspects in that, to it that she's found, and I feel that many of you will connect quite strongly to some of these, some of the stages, if you like, of opening up to the divine truth. Can I just say something? Is it on? Yep. I almost turned it up. Which one are you? Yes. I'll keep talking. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I just wanted to say how, isn't my oh, soulmate really awesome? <laughs> and he loves you so much because he is so sick today. So. All right, so um, before you met me, so we met, we met uh, December, not last year, but the year early. Mm -hmm. December the 29th or 8th or something like that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the ladies always have the dates. <laughs> and uh, and when you, before you met me, how did you view yourself with regard to truth? Like, did you feel you were a truthful person? Did you feel you were open and honest with people around yep. you? What did you feel? I felt that I was, I had a high regard for truth and that I told the truth most of the time. But if, oh, I would have said all of the time, I would have said I don't lie. Um, and I would have said that I appreciate others telling me the truth. And in fact, my mother will tell you, well, she probably won't tell you, but she would say to me that you used to get so upset, Mary, if I said that the dog ran away, but actually he died, and, it was, and you found out later it was always a huge deal for me. So I thought I was very truthful and loved truth. Good. So. So when we, um, shortly after we met, we started spending time together in the first three or four months. How did you find truth then? Like, um, what, what were your, what the feelings that you went through? Uh, very, well, firstly, when, when we were talking about God's truth in um, not personal terms, I absolutely loved it. I was fascinated, I was excited, I couldn't stop talking about it, and we used to spend hours talking about that. Uh, and but when it came to pointing out truth about me, it was very confronting. Um, what, yeah. used to, what used to happen then if you had truth about yourself pointed out? I would get angry usually. <laughs> um, I, I went alright for a little while. Um, it stressed me out, and I'd withdraw. And then, um, yeah, in not too long, I, I got very angry at you for pointing things out or um, for you being truthful about the emotions you were having regarding my behaviour or my actions. Yeah. I would try and control you in that way. Yeah. So, so when you went through that, what were you feeling? Like, what were the feelings inside of you? Um, like, were you feeling that this was a truth issue or were you feeling that I was just no. being a bastard? Or yeah. what were you no. <laughs> No, I couldn't think you're a bastard, which is really hard. Many times you would like to do that. I didn't recognise that it was an issue of truth. Right. I felt that it was all just very overwhelming emotionally, uh, and that things were far too confronting and moving too quickly. Um, but I didn't relate it to actually me resisting truth about my own emotions. So you sort of felt that it was my fault that you were being confronted. Or you felt like yes. being too intense. Yeah, emotionally, that's definitely what I felt. In my head, I was telling myself lots of other stories, but really, I was blaming you for what, bringing me true. What truth. were the stories you were telling yourself in your head? Well, I was denying a lot of my anger. I was saying I wasn't angry. Right. And I was saying, no, no, this is a good thing, and he's a really great man, and okay, I need to take this all on board. But my emotions and my behaviour were actually um, saying, back off, I don't want to know. I'm really angry at you for telling me the truth. Yeah. So, or, or I would go into, I hate myself because I'm such a bad person. Yeah. So then we got to a stage where it was starting to get really intense emotionally for you. And what were you feeling towards me then in terms of truth? Like, in terms of 
do tell the truth. And, and in terms of even our relationship then, you were starting to feel... I started to feel very shut down towards you. Yeah. And um, I told myself I didn't have any feelings for you, I couldn't possibly, and actually um, that I wanted to get away from you. Yeah. yeah. So then, then we spent three months apart, and during that time what were you feeling like about the truth? Like, you still had this attraction, didn't you? To definitely, sort of definitely. I knew that I had found the truth uh, of God, but I wasn't willing to look at the truth of who I really was, um, or emotionally, not just about my identity, because that was also huge, but even just my own emotions and the own emotions that I was carrying around and the emotions that were in my life, I was uh, resistive to feeling that they were the truth. And so what happened in your law of attraction then? So the question was, what, what happened with Mary's law of attraction during this time when she was really wanting to stay away from from me, but still feeling drawn towards truth, like so. Was... Life got pretty difficult um, because my, I guess, my soul was sending out a few different messages. My law of attraction got pretty intense, and um, but because I wanted to shut down what my truth was, how I was feeling emotionally, I got really to quite a desperate sort of a feeling inside of me. Uh, I, I sort of felt a bit suicidal for the first time in my life because there was such a stark contrast between where I felt I wanted to go and where I was letting myself go emotionally in terms of what was truly happening inside of me. And were your emotions flowing during that time? Was no, no, not at all. I, I went through this period of um, not being able to cry at all. I couldn't process a thing. Um, and my law of attraction got really intense. Every single patient I saw and family member that I saw for about a week and a half cried and cried. I'd just come in and touch them or say something to them and they'd be crying and I'd be going, I get it, I can't cry. <laughs> yep, okay. So, so then um, there were sort of some changes that occurred between you and God. And what, what were those changes that sort of caused you to open up a little emotionally? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all it's very blurred. blurred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I've reached a point where um, the knew. contrast was so great. I felt like I can't keep going on like this. So didn't yeah. you, for a period of time, decide to live in the truth of the fact that you were not going to do the truth? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. I went through that phase where I no, nothing that AJ says is true. I'm just going to live the life, sort of the truth I had before, the truth that my family believed, who I, the role I always had with my friends, my family, and that's right. And that I, it was all I needed to just move on with my life and get on with it. Right. That's when the pain really kicked in. <laughs> so, so when you went into that place of full denial of truth, yeah. something that obviously before then happened in your soul would open you up to truth, and so now you're starting to feel, feel quite a lot of pain. Yeah, and that's when I went through this awful period then of feeling, okay, I found the truth, but I can't live in it um, because it's too big and it's too intense and too hard. Too hard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not strong enough to be in the truth, but I know what the truth is. And that that's yep. pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, so that period lasted for quite a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then and then you sort of had a breakthrough with God. Um, I don't know if you remember that. I, I remember a lot. Of, <laughs> I remember a lot of it better than you. Do. I feel like I've had a few breakthroughs with God, but probably I just felt really desperate. I, like, I can't go on like this. I just have to go into this emotion, which by that stage was very black and very dark. And I, is that what I called you? Yeah, yeah, the time, yeah. So, and then I was just sobbing for a long time and feeling that this is true and I can't cope with it, God. Yeah. So, so you went through this place of realising that, and, and this was more like a feeling that you realised that you had to follow the truth, otherwise there'd be lots and lots of pain in your life. Um, did you really make a soul desire for truth at that point? Though? No, no. Okay. So what, what happened then over the next six months? Like A lot of toing and froing right. <laughs> between truth, denial, resistance, truth. Uh, and still an intense fascination and longing for God's truth um, about 
the way the universe works, the way my soul works, but still a lot of resistance to actually feeling what my personal truth is about my life, my family, my relationships, who I am as a person. So you felt really, really attracted to all of the soul truths about the universe and about God's laws and all of those things. And emotional processing, the whole thing, yeah. yeah. But when it came to actually being confronted with an emotion inside of itself, it was like really hard then. So what would happen under those circumstances when that emotion inside of itself got confronted? Uh, I would still tend to get fairly angry or or I would get self-punishing as an avoidance sort of, of going into the deep, deeper emotion. Yep. So I'd beat myself up or I'd beat you up, yep. yeah, one emotionally. Of the, one of the two. Yep. Yep. In order to stop yourself from getting to the truth. Now, um, a few months ago, you sort of got exhausted with that process as well. So can you describe some of the emotions you were feeling? To, to everyone about how that eventually exhausted you as well, how you got into that state of exhaustion of resisting all the time? Yeah. Well, I wasn't really progressing. I wasn't clearing things. My law of attraction was such that there was a lot of conflict um, happening, I suppose, because that's what was happening inside of me, uh, with yourself, with my family, with uh, my friends. There was a lot of... Uh, I think think I think I dealt with something and it would reoccur. Um, I was and I was tired of trying to keep an even keel in my life because that's what I was doing in all of my relationships and within myself. I'll deal with this, but then I'll I'll try and make everything else okay. Yeah. So so there was quite a few blockage emotions then that you were working through in terms of still wanting the truth in your heart, but not being able to live it in your life. Yeah. Because you know, one of my big emotions has been about self-protection and uh, making everyone else happy around me. So if I felt like everyone uh, was happy around me, I felt very safe. And so a lot of my behaviour for a long time had been related to being a nice girl, a good girl, uh, someone who looked after everyone else. Yep. So I would say I want truth, I want to live in it, and then a big emotion about that would get confronted and I would struggle. Yep. Now, you said at the beginning that you felt yourself to be a really sort of moral, truthful person. By this stage, what were you starting to feel about yourself? Pretty bad about myself, uh, and feeling it had been a bit of. Um, well, actually, I just felt more confused about myself. I still had the the story running in my head that I'm a nice, good girl, and taking on a lot of the conflict with my family. Oh, it's my fault because I haven't been a nice, good girl. So then I was starting to feel kind of, oh, maybe I'm actually an awful person, and getting into these very self-punishing emotions. Right. And during this phase of trying to face up with the truth, what was happening with the family, like what, what was going on there? A lot of conflict, and uh, because I had this emotion that this is all my fault, that's what I was um, attracting from them as well. So they were basically saying, it's your fault that you were saying all these things, all these things are not true, it's your you fault. You ruined our family. You ruined us, yeah. okay. Now, now, what caused you to change from actually, so, so at this point you would still say that you were still really in a way resisting truth, but like in your heart truth wasn't a joyful thing, it was like a, it was a painful thing all the time. So what caused this transition between truth being a painful thing and truth being a joyful thing? Uh, I just, I realised um, that I was tired out and, and I recognised on some level that truth was really important. And so I made this decision that, and it was an intellectual decision, I'm going to tell the truth about everything all of the time, no matter what happens. Uh, and that was really confronting in our relationship because I was still going through a lot of turmoil and I really wanted you to feel secure in the relationship. Um, but I decided, no, that's it, I'm just going to um, tell the truth all the time. And so I launched into that, and um, I prayed a lot about knowing what God's truth was about me, which was a big thing, because then I found out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what happened in that process of finding out what, what, what went on there for you inside of yourself? Like? Um, I found that I... Once I started to be really honest, I recognised that my emotions were flowing a lot easier and I was starting to get deeper into the emotions. So during this phase, your emotions started coming up really rapidly yes. and easily. Yes. And you're accessing them. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then um, 
we did an exercise of a big review um, of my life um, in terms of men. Because yeah. um, all the time we're dealing with our emotions, our relationship issues. So um, I sat down one day and I had a page for every man, for every relationship I'd had in my life. And I started to write down, not the story of what I told myself in my head about what those relationships were about, but really the nuts and bolts of what happened. How I met this man, what happened when I met this man, how he treated me, how I treated him, and what happened. And looking at it all in black and white, and then I started to ask myself to be really honest about the emotions, like, was love driving me in this relationship? doesn't really look like it, and so I started to open up to a lot of deeper emotions. Do you, do you mind sort of describing some of the patterns that you discovered that you didn't really think were there before then? Yep, okay, so I had um, told myself that I'd always been in relationships that where I was in love and that I'd been quite moral in those relationships, and what I found was that I'd met a lot of I hadn't had a, a lot of long-term relationships, but I'd had different liaisons with men throughout my life. Um, a lot of them involved alcohol when I met them. A lot of them involved sleeping with them quite early in the relationship. A lot of them involved them not giving their heart to me and me keeping them very much at distance, feeling like I could be the more developed one in the relationship, things like that. Yeah, so that was quite a shock to me in yeah. terms of what I had sell, told myself was my personal truth. Yeah. So when you started stepping into that, you felt a lot of emotions flow over just as you were talking about it with you. Massive emotions. The shame and um, like a lot of law of compensation issues about not loving myself, yeah. not loving them. And you started to see a separation between sex and love as well? Definitely, yeah. And, and, and then we, when you started getting to the bottom of that, you also had a huge sensation of relief. And I was just wondering whether you could describe that. Yeah. Yeah, it was I, like my soul was doing a little jig. Like you finally um, facing truth inside of you. And um, I could just feel how all of these emotions were leaving me. I could feel the patterns that I'd had in my relationships leaving me. That I didn't, that finally my soul was saying, finally, um, the mental thing about love and sex that I'd always had running, it was finally coming together in my soul. Yeah. And I had this really emotional experience of really emotionally realising that when my soul is in truth, it's ready to receive divine love. Before then, I'm just blocking it at every turn. Yeah. But when I can see myself in terms of how God sees me, or at least be in my truth of my emotions, I'm so much more receptive. So before then, you were sort of viewing all of these problems as really, really large problems, where you're like, like, how is I ever going to resolve any of these issues because they're really, really large? What were you feeling now after you... Uh, had these experiences, what were you feeling, how big the problems were then? Well, they were leaving me really quickly. I was feeling connected to you in a way that I've never felt connected, uh, whereas before I'd been so afraid to really go down into the deep, dark uh, depths of all of this man stuff, because I felt, well, what if I'm a really bad person and then we can't be together or, or any of that. The converse happened in that I just felt a deep connection with you and I felt that finally things were writing themselves in my soul, that they were leaving me quickly. Yeah. So before then you were feeling really stark for a fair long time, period of time, and now within a few days, things are leaving quite rapidly and working through things quite rapidly, feeling really different. And so all, a lot of emotions were leaving you really rapidly now. So um, how did you find in terms of your relationship with yourself? Like, did you still have this deep shame and guilt feelings that you were carrying around before then? No, there's still some there, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was much lighter load, yeah. Uh, I felt really high on truth, like it was, like, it, uh, because I finally found truth inside of me and I wasn't trying to hide anything, I wasn't trying to make anyone happy anymore, yep. it was quite liberating. And did it feel hard anymore? 
No, and I felt like I want truth. I want everyone to tell me the truth. And before, because I'd had all of my pleasing emotions, I didn't want to say the truth to others because maybe that would upset them. And also, I didn't want to hear it from them because that would definitely upset me. And now I felt a lot freer in my interactions with other people just to say exactly how I felt and to hear exactly how they felt. Yeah. So, so now when you think about truth, like before when you were thinking about truth, the feeling I would have from you is like almost panic. Like this is feeling of terrible. What fear. am I going to find in there? What am I going to find? How bad, dark, whatever it's going to be. Now, when you think about truth, what do you feel about now? Really excited. Yeah. So, so I suppose what we've been trying to do is just illustrate this transition that occurs if you're willing to face all of these things truthfully. You can see that at the beginning, Mary was finding it really different. And by the way, I've been through a very, very similar experience to Mary in my own life. Of Initially, really, lots of resistance to truth, lots of emotional pain as a result of the resistance to truth, and so forth. Working through these emotions and actually allowing yourself to see the things that you were totally ashamed of and totally, you know, all these different things. And ironically, when you do that, there's this huge relief. And also, because the truth is opened up a pathway within you now, the emotions are now going to be flowing very, very rapidly and very consistently, and there's a feeling you have now when you're feeling emotions compared to what you were feeling before. What, what are those kind of feelings you have now when you're feeling emotions? Well, it feels like a relief. It's like I had the emotional realisation that processing actually makes emotions leave your soul and it changes your soul. Um, I, feel, I feel like, bring it on, you know. I want to, yeah, I want to be triggered. And I, whereas before I was sort of tiptoeing around it all. <laughs> we are rats in my cave. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, you also, why you sometimes mention that while you're feeling emotion, that's when you feel the emotion real now. Definitely. So it's authentic. like, you feel like you're a authentic self. Yeah. 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 And I also have really emotional feelings about truth. Like, I feel quite emotional talking about it. It feels like a really beautiful thing to tell the truth and to, to feel the truth, to feel the truth about God. And I actually feel so much more open to God and closer to God. Yeah. So, so instead of viewing truth as a painful experience like we were before, now you're viewing truth like a, so it's just a pleasure to, to, to have it and, and to live in it. Thanks, darling. <laughs>